Hello friends, uh, I'm back with a video update um, and this time uh, this video is going to focus on monsoon and its onset uh, and I will also talk about the Bay of Bengal system. Um, so today I didn't uh, have time to make a presentation so I'm just going to show you some charts um, and uh, the idea behind uh, whatever uh, conclusion I'm going to make. All right. So uh, the first thing that we should talk about is the monsoon onset. Um, so uh, if you have checked IMD uh, bulletin, they have uh, indicated that the monsoon is going to make an onset in the southernmost point uh, or the South Andaman Sea uh, on May 16th or 17th. Uh, so let us, this is a good news because uh, that means uh, we are looking at a timely onset. But just, just let, let us look at uh, what um, uh, went into this uh, bulletin, like what, what was the reason for issuing this bulletin. So if you see that uh, this is the wind chart and the pressure contours are overlapped or overlaid on the wind chart. Uh, so there is this mascaran high which is our friend because this mascaran high ensures that the winds from the southern hemisphere are pushed um, into uh, the northern hemisphere and uh, that helps in the formation of the Somali jet okay so this line this orange and reddish line that you see that is the Somali jet so right now it is very close to uh, the equatorial line obviously because that's where the ITCZ is the ITCZ has not moved much in the past few days it is slightly above the equator now uh, but this is very good because the Somali jet is strengthening and the strengthening of Somali jet will ensure that a lot of moisture comes in from the uh, West Indian Ocean okay and uh, if you look at uh, around May 15th so the Somali jet has formed and it is uh, straddling along this line and uh, if you go a little bit further you see that there is the uh, westerly depth so 600 HPA is the depth of westerly winds that are required for monsoon onset okay so that is also kind of satisfied and uh, that will be this is the southernmost point of our uh, Andaman Nicobar Islands, right? So that is why uh, IMD is saying that on May 16th, the southernmost point of Andaman Nicobar Islands or Nicobar Islands will see monsoon onset, and that kind of kind of fits in with the dynamics that we are seeing. Okay, the Mascaran High is, uh, is present, and then the Somali Jet is also there. Uh, the speed of this is close to 30 uh, uh, knots, or yeah, so close to 56, 50 kilometers per hour, which is what is expected. And so the monsoon onset uh, will start slowly and then it is expected to propagate northward as we go into the month of May. All right. Um, so if you look at the IMD chart as well, which is the IMD GFS model, the same thing is seen. This is the Somali jet that I talked about. The Somali jet is strengthening and it is going to start. So this is again the 600 HPA wind depth. So um, it will satisfy the wind and um, direction criteria rainfall criteria will follow because once the um, the system the jet is formed then it will take away it will take a lot of moisture and it will pour a lot of rain to the uh, south the southernmost end of Andaman Islands okay so that will follow and OLR will also go down OLR which is outgoing long wave radiation will reduce to less than 200 watts per meter square because there will be a lot of cloudiness okay so this all fits in well all right uh, so let us now don't uh, focus on this circulation or this uh, system that is being uh, talked about a lot of speculation is going on I'll come to that later but uh, given this onset that um, the Andaman Islands will or the south most point of Andaman Islands will see onset on May 16th things are looking good for monsoon to progress and uh, ITCZ movement is also seen if you look at um, the ITCZ movement uh, for the the uh, rest of May which is after May 20th or 22nd the ITCZ is going to start moving at a quite um, uh, rapid pace so so far it was sluggish but uh, it is ex expected to move uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a quite rapid fashion after May 20th so that means that slowly the onset will happen over Kerala and I'm still expecting that the onset will happen either on time or slightly before time so anywhere between May 29th to June 1st we could expect a onset of monsoon for Kerala right. so that is as of this is basically looking at conditions right now right. okay so this is one thing so now let us uh, move ahead to um, uh, what is the system doing 
right? So a lot of you, if you have seen the model runs, then you would have you would have seen that uh, the different models are showing different trajectory, and they are kind of intensifying this into a cyclone. Okay. So I'm not going to argue much. I'm just going to present you the dynamics and let you decide on your own whether there is going to be a cyclone or not. Okay. Uh, so basically, first thing you have to uh, remember is the monsoon onset has been announced uh, that it will happen around May 16th at this point, right near the southern Andaman uh, Sea. And uh, this system that is expected, the genesis of that system is going to, so this today is 12th. The genesis of the system is somewhere around this point, right? Which is again the South Andaman Sea. Okay, and if you look at uh, some of the satellite images as of today, the system is not able to organize, right? This so even in the first week of or uh, end of April and first week of May, there were speculations that cyclone is going to form and come toward India, come towards the Indian coast, but the system just did not survive. It just disintegrated, and same thing has ha been happening for the past two weeks. So the system is not able to gain momentum and intensify right so this uh, cloud band will move and then it will disintegrate uh, so although there's a lot of convective activity present because this is where the ITCZ line is located so that's why a lot of convection is happening but the system is not able to strengthen okay. now the reasons for that is very straightforward because if you look at I'm just going to show you three different things once you look at the anomaly charts then uh, SST anomaly this is a seven day anomaly of how the sea surface temperature has changed you can see that a lot of warming is only present in the central bay or slightly uh, central west bay in the south in the in the uh, in the south region or southern bay there is not much uh, anomalous heating happening right you need anomalous heating for uh, uh, for any system to intensify so that is not seen and moreover uh, the equatorial kelvin wave is not very strong in my opinion right now that's why this region is not seeing a anomalous heating Right. So this is one thing. So you don't see much of this, this red patch if it was here, then definitely the system would, system would intensify. Second thing is even though the Bay of Bengal is very hot, temperatures are 31, 30 degrees Celsius, but that is not the only criteria. Atmosphere and ocean have to interact with each other. So this is where I've been constantly talking about the gradients, the atmospheric ocean gradients. Right. So atmosphere has, if atmosphere is at 25, ocean is at 30, a lot of convection will happen. But if atmosphere is at 29 and ocean is at 30, then that convection is not going to happen at a very rapid rate. And that is kind of seen from this MJO plot, right? MJO has been very weak for a very long time. So within this circle, if MJO is present, this circle, then MJO is a, has a very weak activity. And this is kind of seen by all the models, where right? MJO is very weak. And even if you look at the GFS model, MJO is being kept in this inner circle. That is not good because that will not allow for a very strong convection to happen. And the last point, which is the nail in the coffin, is the wind shear. So once the monsoon onset happens, you know that there is going to be very high shear because there are going to be um, east-west shear, zo shear zone, right? Uh, because the lower level winds will be westerly, but whereas the upper level winds will be easterly. So there is going to be a strong shear zone. So how can a system survive when the strong shear zone is out of my understanding? All the models are showing that there are chances of some cyclone formation but these three things clearly kind of indicate that it is right now not a very good indication of uh, a, a cyclonic system or a cyclone forming right so uh, I am not going to conclude anything uh, I am in my opinion if you ask uh, I have been saying from very beginning that dynamics will tell you a lot of things and as per the current dynamics I feel that the models are over predicting this cyclone formation but based on whatever I have told you today, you guys can take a call and uh, I would urge you to not look at only the model outputs, but also look at these dynamics, which tell a lot of things and uh, make you question what the model output is doing. Okay? Uh, so right now, if you uh, ask me, cyclone formation is not likely uh, and monsoon onset, if it happens, then definitely cyclone formation is, uh, chances are very, very, very low, like 0.0001%. Uh, so with that i would like to close and uh, i will be back with more updates and uh, since monsoon onset is happening and interesting days are ahead in terms of monsoon onset and monsoon propagation uh, i will keep coming back with a uh, lot of videos regarding monsoon and uh, special coverage of monsoon on onset and uh, how it is propagating all right so stay tuned and subscribe to my channel thank you so much